Hello, and welcome to Busy, Greedy, Inked, and Witchy, a magical living podcast for the busy witch. I'm Morgan, eclectic witch of more than 20 years, self-proclaimed fluffy bunny, light worker, and busy witch. Here we will talk all things witchy, including my personal magical tips and tricks, busy witch hacks, and real talk about current metaphysical happenings, which wouldn't be complete without my snark and unique way of looking at the world. So brew some coffee or tea, sit back, and let's do this. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 86 of Busy, Gritty, Inked, and Witchy, and today I am giving you all my favorite grounding technique. Yes, I am in grounding mode right now, especially with the beginning of March. Spring is arriving soon. The weather should be getting warmer, or at least a little bit more stable. I don't know about y'all, but I am kind of tired of this weather roller coaster that especially Arizona is having where it's 75 during the day and then the next day it's snowing and I'm done. (laughs) But the weather should be getting a little bit warmer, at least leveling out, and it's time to get outside and get reconnected with the earth. Yes, that is the energy for March. So today I want to share my favorite grounding technique, which is just one of quite a few grounding techniques that I have. Uh, This one is definitely quick and easy. It can be done outside, so you can put your feet directly onto the earth and get that extra grounding energy, or it can be done in a chair. So it can be done anywhere. And I also am teaching you all today a little bit about receptive and projective energy. I don't know if a lot of you know that. So basically for my favorite grounding technique, you want to either stand or sit with the soles of your feet flat on the ground. And of course, it would be best if you're not wearing shoes or socks, but this does still work if you are wearing shoes, socks, anything like that. You don't have to have like direct connection with the earth, with the bottoms of your feet, okay? So you have to know your receptive and projective sides of your body. For those of you who've been in witchcraft for a while, this is probably a review for you. If you're a beginner witch, hopefully you learned something new today. So your dominant hand, the one that you write with, is the projective side of your body, okay? And what that means is whatever hand you write with, that is the side of your body that you are going to project your energy outward from your body. Okay, so when you are casting a spell, or when you are casting a circle, an energetic circle, or when you are laying hands on someone to help heal them, okay, your dominant hand, that side of your body is your projective side, that is where you will take your energy and project it outward. Okay, your non dominant hand is the receptive side of your body. So that's where you take in energy. That is where you take in energy from the earth, from another person, from the elements. If you work with elements and you have them empower you, you are taking energy from the outside world into you and into your body through the receptive side of your body or your non-dominant hand. Okay, it goes for the soles of the feet as well. So just starting out, know right now, because I don't know if you're left-handed or right-handed, and even if you're ambidextrous, generally speaking, you're going to have one side of your body or one hand that's a little bit stronger than the other one. So right now, just firmly get in your head, okay, which side of my body is receptive where I'm going to take in energy and which side of my body is dominant or projective where I'm going to have that energy go out of me. Okay, so have that established in your head. So keep that in mind throughout this practice. Now, stand with your feet on the ground or sit with the soles of your feet flat on the ground. Okay, and you're going to take three deep, slow breaths. And it does help to close your eyes as well. Now, this whole practice is the three breaths. You can do more if you want, but it's how you breathe and how you visualize the energy as to what makes this a grounding technique, okay? So on each inhale, visualize white light coming up into the sole of your receptive foot, okay? So picture that white light coming from the earth in through your receptive foot, 
Then circle that white light through your body. So bring it up the receptive side of your body, up to the top of your head, down your projective side of your body. And then as you exhale, push that white light out through the sole of your foot on your projective side. So what you have done here is created an energetic current, this loop that brings in cleansing, grounding energy from the earth and out flows stress and negative energy. So that is basically what you're doing. And you want to do this through three breaths. So on the inhale, draw that white light up from the earth into your receptive side, up over the top of your head, down your projective side and out that sole of your foot to be absorbed back into the earth. And then the cleansed energy is going to come back up and you see how it's an energetic loop and inhale, bring the energy in. And then when it gets to the top of your head, begin to exhale and push that energy out through your projective foot. And that's it. It is literally as simple as that. Usually three really good, slow, deep breaths. And I am completely grounded. I've brought my energy back. I feel stress-free. I feel way more connected to the earth. I feel comforted. And it really is as simple as that. It can be done anywhere as long as you do have some kind of connection to the ground. Okay, so if you really enjoyed this, if you found it helpful in the Ink Spirit Coven, we are covering grounding practices and techniques. The month of March in our magical flow of the entire year, that's the theme for the whole year in the Ink Spirit Coven, is magical flow. This Sunday, in fact, March 5th, is our first live lesson. It is a live lesson on grounding where I will share not only this technique with them, But I will share tons of others that are quick, simple, easy to incorporate into your existing routine. And I'll also be going over things like gemstones and herbs that are great for grounding energy as well. All of this and more is going to be shared in my Ink Spirit Coven live lesson. Now, if you're a member of Ink Spirit and you cannot make the live lessons, everything is recorded and put into our lesson archives for members, okay? Then in two weeks, I will lead members in a guided meditation for grounding. So we are focusing on grounding for the entire month of March. So if this sounds like something that you would like to do, you can join us at inkedspirit.com. And I really hope to see you join because it's a great community. It's a learning circle of eclectic witches. We have beginner witches in there, up to witches who have been practicing for more than 30 years. So there's a little bit of everything. We do have a private Facebook group where we all come together. We have daily discussions. We have weekly magical activities, monthly magical activities. It's just a really great, amazing group of eclectic witches. So that's what I have for you all today. Today is short and simple. I wanted to give you all one of my personal practices for grounding and then let you all know that that's what we're doing for the whole month of March in the Ink Spirit Coven. I want to thank you all so much for listening, for supporting me, and for giving me a platform where I can share my techniques like this and stuff that I've picked up over the last 20 years of being a witch. (laughs) And I hope you found this helpful and I will see you all again soon.